Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Today I'll be taking a look at this, the Green Arrow 6 scale figure based on the character from the Arrow television series on the CW. Let's see how it turned out. Alright, first up the packaging, as always. Uh, they've done some pretty glossy finish on just a photo of the character from the show. There's some crazy weird title treatment uh, placement going on there. I just not, I'm just i just not sure that it flows. I think artistically it's not the best look that I've seen for uh, action figure um, packaging. Uh, the side is a bit of a departure. I kind of like that. It's really dramatic, really bold. And uh, that's, yeah, that's tastefully done on the back as well for all the credits. I'll say this for the marketing department at the CW. They really do amp up the drama of these shows. Frequently more so than the shows do themselves, but getting into the guts of the packaging, you can open it up and there's some more great photography there as well as a peek at the figure and its accessories. Speaking of which, let's take a look. There's some costume elements that you'll need to assemble. Um, the quiver and its two shoulder harnesses will go together. Several arrows, that little stabbing arrow right there, which is kind of cool. Uh, there's the bow, a compound bow and several hands, one, two that will uh, help you uh, pose the figure with the drawstring pulled back. That's kind of cool. Uh, costume looks pretty good. Uh, a few ex extra arrows that come with the exclusive version. I think that's what this is. There's a grappling arrow, boxing glove arrow, fire arrow, exploding arrow, and a broadhead. This is the part that I don't really dig. There's a missed opportunity here. They did not do a wire in the hood, so we're going to have to come up with a way to make this work. Otherwise, it's just going to kind of defy gravity. and Nobody's going to really dig that. The Oliver Queen head, the unmasked portrait, so to speak, um, it's decent. It's decent. It works. It's not um, It's not a spot-on likeness of Stephen Amell, but for this scale, I think it's fine. Got a nice little action stand there, and that pretty much sums it up. Let's get to the posing. You can see here that I've already assembled both the stand, the flight stand, and the shoulder harness itself. Now, the first thing I'm going to want to do in order to make this thing, you know, bend to my will, is fix that hood issue. And what I'm doing here is using some double-sided tape. I was able to find two types of double-sided double scotch tape at the local staple store. One was what they called removable, the other one was what they called permanent. The permanent is anything but. Um, it might be permanent if you're like placing a paper, attaching the paper to walls or something like that. It would uh, stick quite, it would adhere quite a bit with more force. But when it comes to this, I think that the permanent is exactly what you need. It's not so tacky that it's going to rip paint off. It's very much akin to, say, a very, very strong post-it note. Now here in the little inset, you're going to notice that I'm actually showing you how to put on the shoulder harnesses there. The shoulder harnesses, the way that they work is one goes over each arm. You'll be able to, to, to determine which one is which, but you'll want to have those accoutrements, the little arsenal stuff on the front as you do this. Now if you look at the main screen on the left there, you'll see that the, the harness itself is what the quiver attaches to. There are a couple of hooks on the back of the quiver and they are meant to hook onto e e one side hooks onto each one of the harnesses. It's actually a really effective way of making this work. I'm not sure how the actual costume elements work in the show, uh, the one that Stephen Amell wears, but yeah, I think that uh, for this scale especially, um, devising that was actually a pretty clever thing for Star Race to come up with. Or, you know, maybe they were just aping exactly what the costume does. Again, I've never laid eyes on it. Hopefully they have. But enough about that. You'll see, if you look at the main imagery there, okay, this, here I'm going to show you how to put together this flight stand, um, so just pay attention to that if that's your thing. But meanwhile, you'll see that the tape that I used for the hood seems to be working out pretty well here, and I, I'll, I'll just go ahead and spoil the ending for you. It does. It, it hangs out really well. Eventually it will need to be replaced, especially if you keep reposing the figure. That's fine. I think it's a cheap and easy fix. My first concern, my primary concern with it was that the adhesive might damage the material on the hood, but then I got an inside look at the hood itself and the interior, the inner shell of the hood is not the fake leather um, stuff that they have going on in the exterior. It's an actual fabric. So that's great. That was great news. That means that uh, there's no chemical reaction that will occur that I'm concerned with. Uh, maybe over time, I don't know. I'm no chemist. But I guess time will tell, and you have to decide for yourself whether you want to risk it or not. For me, it's worth it. Um, just look at that. It looks it looks much better than it did when it came out of the box. Uh, you'll see here when I'm posing the legs that I'm running into the first collision with, uh, with what I'm wanting and what I can actually pull off. The feet. 
Uh, there's no flexibility whatsoever to those boots, and they they don't flex at all, and they're at an angle that I find undesirable. The thing is, is that uh, you you're not going to have a whole lot of luck standing him straight up uh, without making some adjustments and adjusting the balance of the figure itself. Uh, I really had to work with it. It's not impossible. You can make it work, as you'll see in the photography later on in the, at the end of the video. Legitimately, that's really the only gripe that I have about the figure as a whole. I could speak again about the unmasked portrait of Stephen Amell. It, it's not a portrait that I ever intend to use, and I'm not sure exactly what scenario would make me want to use it. This figure is best representative of the character, in my opinion, by using the masked portrait. That's what Arrow is about. That's what Green Arrow is about. I've been a fan of Green Arrow since the early 80s. And this is the look that I want for the character on my shelf. One of the things that I'm noticing about this figure as well as the Flash figure, and I'm, I'm fairly confident that it will continue all the way through Martian Manhunter and other figures in this line that they seem intent on expanding. I think that there's almost a stylized notion of the shape of the body itself, like the legs are just a little bit on the long side. Uh, it's not unpleasant at all. I think that it works. Um, it's almost got, like I said, a stylized uh, comic book superhero kind of a thing going for it, which is great. The comic books were the source of my fandom. Uh, the the TV show was just something I gravitated to because I was a fan of the character. To be honest, I've kind of walked away from the TV show lately. It just got a little bit too soap operatic for me, I guess, for lack of a better term. Um, but the f cool thing about the figure is that I can choose to focus on the elements of the show that were important to me, and that's just Green Arrow being kick-ass and looking awesome, as this figure does if you do the right thing with it, and I feel like I was able to do quite a few good things with this figure, if you take a look here. And, as you're about to see, the figure, when you put it together with the Flash, very, very awesome. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, hope you enjoyed the photos, leave some comments if you like, I'll be glad to discuss things with you, and until next time, be good to your plastic.